Hello everyone, this is AJ. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to AJ's Movie Place. Yeah, so I've got a new movie review for you today of an old film, that being the 1988 horror film, Child's Play. So let's talk about this film. Okay, so in a few days time we have starting the new Chucky TV series. Um, I intend to watch it, I'm looking forward to it, and I will review every episode as it airs. Um, now, it got me thinking, why not revisit the Child's Play films? Um, I can watch them all, I can review them, and then at the end I can do a ranking of the series. Um, yeah, makes sense. So, um, now just to let you know, I'm not big on horror. I'm not a massive horror fan. I've got my sort of go-to that I grew up with as a child, this being one of them. Um, I haven't seen them for a long, long time. I mean, the newer ones, obviously, I have when they came out. But the originals, one, two, and three, certainly not seen for a considerable amount of time. Um, so I thought I'll revisit them and, and tell you my thoughts. So, anyway, so Child's Play 1 was released in the US in 1988. Here in the UK, we got the film on June 2nd of 1989. The film runs for one hour and 27 minutes, and the film has in its cast Catherine Hicks as Karen Barkley. Now, Catherine Hicks, um, you may recognize her. She was in Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. She was the, the, the uh, the girl who looked after the whales, the young lady that Captain Kirk sort of had a theme for in, in, in the film story. Um, Chris Sarando um, stars as Mike Norris, a detective within the film. Um, Alex Vincent plays a very young Andy Barkley. Um, Brad Dourif, um, quite a famous actor in his own right. Um, he obviously plays Charles Lee Ray and voices the doll of Chucky. Um, the film's story is by Don Mancini, um, who is pretty much the architect of Child's Play. His name will crop up a lot in throughout this series of, of reviews, because he's like the, the main guy behind um, the Chucky franchise now. Um, the film was directed by Tom Holland. No, not that Tom Holland, a different Tom Holland. Um, yeah, he, he also had a writing credit on it as well. Now, Tom Holland, prior to this, had directed Fright Night. He, he generally works in the sort of horror area of, of, you know, he's done Tales from the Crypt, a couple of episodes of Amazing Stories. Um, and, yeah, he, he's got quite a strong pedigree um, after this film and a tiny bit before. But, yeah, so um, the film itself. Let's talk about the story. So... <sighs> Obviously, you know the story of Charles Play. I'll give a quick recap. Um, the story opens with uh, Charles Lee Ray being chased by the police. He's chased into a toy store. <coughs> um, he's shot and sort of mortally wounded. And gets a, a, a Chucky doll, says some sort of mumbo jumbo. All these clouds appear, lightning. And um, he's then dead. And, and obviously you come to find out that, that his, his being, his soul has been transferred into the doll of Chucky. Now, um, Andy Barkley, uh, the son of Karen Barkley, in, in the story of the film, it's his birthday, he's about six years old, um, and he really wants a Chucky doll for his, for his birthday. He doesn't get one, but there's a peddler in the street selling one, um, which just happens to be the one possessed, and the mother buys it, brings it home to him, and... Yeah, and the film happens. Um, obviously, there's killings in it. They think that that Andy Barkley is a little bit crazy at first and probably responsible because um, he's he's saying it's the doll. He's saying the doll talks to him. People don't believe him. All this sort of stuff. I don't really need to tell you the story. Uh, and and yeah, that's it. So horror film, obviously. Um, now I just want to say that that that. The film is primarily set in is set in Chicago, and they used the Brewster Building apartments for the majority of the film, in which is where where the, 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 the you know where they live, 
um, the externals of the building and the internals of the lift shaft and that looks all amazing and it's pretty much complements the film and is a character in its own right within the film so my thoughts on this film okay so like i said i haven't seen this for a long time not massively big on horror but i can i can stomach these i've got no problem with them um the film visually is very much a product of the 80s um it's got that 80s feel to it that 80s look um the story is is what you would expect from this sort of a story a, a killer doll goes rogue um now there are elements to the story that that i did take issue with um the minute that you find out that charles lee ray is becoming human um in the doll the longer he spends in the doll he becomes human now with regards to that, I am interested in seeing the sequels and to see if this was a plot point that was actually conveniently forgot about in the other films. Because I recall, obviously, Chucky trying to do the same thing in the later films, and he, he, he you know, he must have lost. He must have sort of gone through this process by then. So I'm thinking that's a plot point that that was sort of conveniently forgot come the sequels. But yeah, um, you find out when Chucky goes to see. Um, the voodoo master who taught him all these sort of voodoo rituals and and he ends up killing him but before he, he kills him he finds out that he has to transfer his soul into the soul of the first person he revealed himself to be the doll uh, to be alive um, this being Andy Barclay so at this point in the film any real concern for the character of Andy um, dissipates because you know that you know, all right, so Chucky's chasing him down with a knife through the flat and all this sort of thing. Um, but you're thinking, well, he's not actually going to kill him. He can't kill him because then he's stuck. He needs him. He needs him. So he's chasing him around with a knife. But ultimately, all right, the child doesn't know this in the context of the story. So the child would be scared. Um, but you as a viewer, you're aware that, you know, this isn't an issue and that this, you know, the kid's not really in that sort of physical danger. He's in danger of being caught and, and the transference taking place. Um, so that was one of the primary issues I had with the film. The pacing for the film was was um, very good. I mean, it's only a, a, a one hour and 27 minutes. For this sort of a film, you don't really want much longer. The film doesn't overstay its welcome. Um, the characters are generally all, you know, well-rounded. Um, you know, you, you learn about their histories and all this sort of thing. Um, there is some questionable acting within the film. There are a couple of scenes with um, Catherine Hicks, between Catherine Hicks and Alex Vincent, not sorry, Catherine Hicks and Chris Sarandon, the, the detective, where the acting felt a bit sort of, you know, wasn't, probably not the best take. Um, I felt that Alex Vincent as Andy Barcliffe was fantastic. He was, he, you know, he shone in the film as a child actor. Um, he was pretty damn good. Um, Brad Dourif always, you know, he's a joy to watch no matter what he stars in. He, he's he's one of those actors that, that, you know, he's good. He kind of elevates the stuff above himself. And he's fantastic as the voice of Chucky. Um, the special effects in the film were actually better than what I remembered they were. Um, the movement of the mouth of, of, of the Chucky doll and all this. It was all, all very good, very, very good. Um... The end of the film did actually remind me of the Terminator when this doll's been, you know, it's been burnt and then it's been bits of being shot off of it and it's, you know, it just keeps coming, keeps coming. It's relentless, like like the Terminator. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there was that sort of reminiscence feel to it. Um, but yeah, all in all, uh, an enjoyable film. It's an enjoyable hour and a half to watch. Um, yeah, the film... Ultimately, it had a it had a a budget of nine million dollars, um, and went on to gross just over worldwide just over forty four million. So a financial hit, um, and obviously it spawned a load of sequels. It spawned six sequels and a remake, and obviously now a TV series that that's that's coming. So. Yeah. So anyway, so it's a film that I could recommend to people if they if they don't mind a little bit of horror. It's sort of light on scares. Um, yeah, a few jump scares in it. The music does help with the scares. The musical score was pretty good in the film, in that it does um, help 
with the progression of, of the scares and, and the, the sense of dread that you get when you're being you've got this possessed doll um so i would say it's probably one of the best possessed doll films out there um and, and well worth a watch now if you are new to this i don't generally give a ranking of of one to ten or anything like that for films because i find it very arbitrary um where i could give this something like a six or seven and then i'm giving a film from another series you know i could give a marvel film um a six or seven or lower and and then you're saying well but you've given chucky child's play this but then this marvel film you've given less and obviously that marvel so it's very i find it very arbitrary and very much pointless exercise giving a film um a, a number out of ten or that sort of thing um so all i can say is that i would recommend this if you enjoy this sort of a this sort of genre of filmmaking um yeah so very good um i'm gonna enjoy watching the second one and the tv series um yeah anyway this is aj thank you for watching and hopefully i'll see you in the next one take care all and goodbye